Hi guys, welcome to module four, which is on targeting audiences using Facebook ads. The objective of this module is to help you target and reach the right audience for your business. The agenda for today's session is to first help you define your audience, to help you know the importance of knowing your target audience accurately. Next is core audiences on Facebook how you can use Facebook's precise and accurate targeting functionality to reach your audience. Then we'll move on to custom audiences, which will help you reach your existing customers and prospects on Facebook. Post that we we'll look at lookalike audiences, which are audiences that are similar to your existing audiences. We we'll look at placements, where on Facebook can you place your ads? And then we'll look at the budget that you can set for your campaign and how you can schedule it to run on certain days and times. So let's get started with the first section, which is on defining your audience. How do you define your audience effectively so you can reach out to them in the most effective way? So who is your audience. Your audience is basically a group of customers and potential customers that you want to reach to drive sales for your business. Not all customers are the same. Let's say you have a group of customers and prospects. Each one of them would have different interests, different characteristics. So your audience would actually have different segments and based on the different interests and characteristics that your audience has, you can divide them into specific groups or specific segments. This is what you call audience segmentation. And this is extremely important because it allows you to send the right message to the right segment of your audience. So let's say that amongst your entire set of customers and prospects, you have identified people who exhibit certain similar interests and characteristics. You would then group these people together into what we call audience segments. So you would have one segment for people who exhibit the same interests and preferences. You could have one segment for your existing customers for your page fans. You could have another one for people who visited your website or people who've been to your website and completed a purchase as well. For each of these segments, you would then send out a specific message that is the most relevant to them. When you do this, your ads would be more effective since you're reaching out to the right audience with the right message in the right context in the right time as well. So let's understand this with an example. I hope all of you remember the cupcake shop that we've looked at in some of the previous modules as well. So this is an offline store that sells cupcakes. Now let's say the cupcake shop wants to reach out to different segments within their overall audience. They would be looking at questions like, which different groups should they target? How old would their audience be? Where would these people be living? What would they like? What would their interests be? Right? These are the kind of questions that they would be asking themselves to define their target audience and then segment them into specific groups for relevant messaging. Now, what I want you guys to do is pause the video for a few minutes and come up with at least two different audience segments for the cupcake shop. Think about it. This is a cupcake shop, let's say in your neighborhood and their objective is to get people to walk in to their store to buy cupcakes. In this particular case, what kind of audience segments would they go after? So you can pause the video and come up with at least two different segments. 
Great guys, so hope all of you put down your audience segments for the cupcake shop. Let's look at two examples of ways in which they can think about their segments. So the first segment would be people who live within a five mile radius of the store who are probably looking for a new place that's just opened around them or a new place to try out they've not, which they've not tried before. The other segment could be people looking for the best cupcakes for a special event. This could be people living even let's say 10, 20 kilometers away, but they're looking for the best cupcakes in the city. Let's say for a birthday, for gifting a friend, gifting a colleague, for an anniversary, for a special location. So these are two different audience segments that the cupcake shop could possibly have. So let's say in these segments, they had probably three different kinds of audiences. One could be a teenage girl, other a working woman, and the third, a stay at home dad. Each of these segments would now have different interests and behaviors, which when you are defining the audience for your business, you would need to define accordingly as well. So in the case of this teenage girl, she probably likes shopping. She also likes coffee, likes visiting cafes. She is a university graduate. Putting down this segmentation with specific interests and behavior characteristics will help you target this audience effectively on Facebook ads later, which is why this is extremely important. So if you look at the second example of a working woman, so this could be a woman working in an event management company who is probably a health and fitness freak and listens to pop music. The third one, the stay at home dad accesses the internet through his mobile phone. He lives within a five kilometer radius of the cupcake shop and also has a pet dog. So these unique interests, behaviors and characteristics will not only help you reach them effectively through Facebook ad targeting, but will also help you craft the right messaging to strike a chord with this audience. So for example, in case of the teenage girl, the message would be something like looking for a new cafe to hang out at this weekend. For the working woman, it could possibly be a communication that says we do large orders for events because she works at an event management company and she could possibly looking, be looking for cupcake shops or outlets that could help her satisfy large orders for her clients and for the stay at home dad who is within a five kilometer radius of the store it could be something as specific as pop by your neighborhood bakery for afternoon tea so this is an example of how defining your audience is right can help you craft the right messaging that would be most relevant to them that they would connect to better and that would help you get the best returns from your Facebook ads as well. Facebook's campaign structure, which you guys have seen in earlier module, would help you reach each segment with the tailored messaging that we just discussed. For example, in the case of the cupcake store, they would probably choose their objective, which could be to drive store visits. For each single audience segment, they would create a different ad set and with each ad set, they would have specific ad creative copy format and messaging that would be most relevant to the audience being targeted with that ad set. Right. So to take the previous example that we just discussed in case of the cupcake shop, the campaign objective would most likely be store visits. You would have one ad set targeting the audience similar to the teenage girl, one ad set targeting an audience similar to the working woman, and another ad set targeting an audience similar to the stay at home dad. And for each of these 
audiences, you would create ad copies, creatives and messaging that would connect with them the best. So what I want you guys to do now, now that you've understood how audiences should be segmented and why it is extremely important to segment them to get the best results. You've also done a small task defining two audience segments for the cupcake shop. Now you guys can pause the video and define the target audience for your own business. Great guys. Now that you've defined your audience and segmented it as well, let's look at how Facebook can help you reach these segments in the most effective manner. So Facebook ads allows you targeting options that are extremely accurate. While targeting accuracy across advertising networks is just about 65%, Facebook offers you much more precise targeting with an 85% accuracy. This helps you reach exactly the right kind of audience you want to get in front of. So what are the different targeting options that Facebook has? Facebook offers you a whole bunch of diverse targeting options. The first one is what we call core audiences. These are highly sophisticated targeting options with unsurpassed accuracy that we just discussed. This helps you find the most relevant audiences on Facebook and reach out to them for your business. Next is custom audiences. Custom audiences are audiences who are, who have already interacted with you in the past. So you can reach your existing customers and prospects on Facebook. And third is lookalike audiences. These are people who are similar to your existing audiences. So basically you can find more people who are similar to your existing customers, similar to your existing prospects and expand the reach for your business. So let's look at each one of them in detail, beginning with core audiences. So how do we target these core audiences on Facebook or what does core audience targeting entail? The first one is you can target by demographics. So you can target people based on their life events. For example, people who've just got married, by which school they went to, when they graduated, the level of their education, the field of study, their relationship status, and a lot more as well. You can target them based on their interests. So are they interested in fitness and shopping, fashion, business? There's a whole bunch of interests that you can choose from. You can also target them by their behaviors, such as are they expats? What is their purchase behavior? Do they travel frequently? What kind of phones do they use? All of this. You can target them by their location. So you can target them by specific cities, states, countries. You can even mark a location on the map and target people within a radius around it. You can also reach out to people who are connected to you. For example, people who've liked your page, people who've responded to your event, people who've installed your app, as well as their friends. So you can target friends of people who liked your page, friends of people who installed your app, friends of people who respond to your event, right? So each one of these is extremely targeted, accurate, precise, and powerful. And we'll look at these in a lot more detail as we go further. So let's take a look at a live demo of the core audiences on the Facebook ad platform. So after you've logged into your Facebook ads manager and chosen your objective at the campaign level, which you've seen in the previous module, you will then come to the ad set level where you can choose your audience placements, budget and schedule. So we look at all of these today. So the audience level, you can define who you want to get your ads in front of. On the right, you have something called an audience size. 
along with the potential reach of the audience that you've currently selected to target. It will also tell you if your audience is too broad or too specific. If the audience is too specific, your ads might not deliver because the audience is way too small. If your audience is too broad, you might not be reaching the most relevant people. So let's look at the different core targeting options that Facebook offers us. The first one is location. So you can target people in a specific location. Like I said, you can target by country. So let's say you want to target people in India. You can do that. If you want to change it to add specific countries, let's say you want to add people in the United States, you can add United States as well. So now you've targeted two countries, India and the United States, and you can see the potential reach for these two countries is 413 million people. Apart from this, you can also add specific cities. So let's say I want to target people who are in Mumbai. So you can target people in Mumbai. That's 9.9 .9 million people in Mumbai on Facebook who are 18 and above. That's the age that you can also put. So you can also target by age here and you can reduce it or increase it depending on the age group of your target audience. You can also add a radius around your city. So if you want to target people within a 10 mile radius of Mumbai, you can do that as well. You can add multiple cities too. So if you want to add Delhi, you can add Delhi as well. There's no limit to the number of locations you want to add. You can add as many as you want. You can also target by a specific location on the map. For example, let's say that you have a business, an offline business that is located somewhere in Mumbai, let's say here. So I can choose drop pin and mark my location here. And then I can choose to target people who are within one mile of my offline store. So this could be for any offline business. It could be a restaurant, a spa, a salon, offline retail, could be a mall, anything where you require people to walk into your business. So in this case, you can see the potential reach is about 350,000 people, people who are 18 plus within one mile of your current location. If you have multiple branches, you can mark multiple locations as well. So let's say you have another branch of your offline store here. You can mark that as well. And if you got another branch here, you could mark that too. So now you've got people within one mile of three of your branches, right? Another thing with location targeting, which makes it more specific is this drop down here. So right now you're targeting everyone in Mumbai. You could target people who are living in Mumbai, people recently in Mumbai, and people currently traveling in Mumbai. So if you select like people traveling in Mumbai, you can see there are 130,000 people, 18 plus, who are currently traveling in Mumbai. So for each of these options, there are multiple use cases depending on what business you are in. You could use these options to target your audience effectively. For example, if you are in a business where you want to target people traveling in Mumbai, let's say you run a restaurant and you want to target people who are currently traveling and would want to eat out, you could target these guys, right? If let's say you run a cab company, since people traveling in Mumbai might need to use public transport, you could target them. So for each targeting option that is there here, there is a whole universe of possibilities open to multiple businesses to use them to reach out to their audience effectively. Right? And it is important to get your targeting right, because if you get your targeting wrong, you might end up reaching people who are not so relevant to you. And in the process, 
your marketing efficiency or advertising efficiency will drop. Apart from location targeting and age targeting, where you can set the age of your target audience, you can also target by gender. So you want to target only men or only women. You could do that as well. You could target people based on the language they speak. So for example, if you want to target people in Mumbai who speak Marathi, you could do that. So you've now got 2.2 million people in Mumbai 18 plus who speak Marathi. Again, a whole bunch of businesses that could use this targeting option as well. Let's say you run a Marathi newspaper, Marathi magazine, Marathi blog, right? Literature, cinema, food, it's specific. Let's say Marathi food fest that you want to target people who speak Marathi. You could do that. Right? You could do this. So any, any language can be targeted here. Let's say you want to target people in Mumbai who speak Japanese. You could even do that. So you've got about nearly 5,000 people in Mumbai who speak Japanese. So we've seen location, targeting, targeting by age, gender, and languages. Next, it brings us to something called detailed targeting, which is truly massive and powerful. Each of these targeting categories have subcategories, sub subcategories, and it opens up a whole array of opportunities for every business out there to reach out to their audience effectively in the most precise and accurate manner. Under demographics, so let's see what we have here. You can target people based on their education level. So do they have an associate degree, a college degree? You want to target people who've done their PhDs, you can do that. People who've gone to graduate school, high school, those who have a master's degree. You can target people by what they've studied. So you want to target someone who's let's say done chemical engineering, you could do that. You want to target someone who studied medicine, you can do that. So again, depending on your audience definition and segmentation, you can use each of these options to reach out to them. You can target people who went to a certain school, right? When they did their undergraduation. You could target people based on which years they were born in between. So you could target millennials, baby boomers in the United States, Gen X as well. So these are people, you have the description here, born between 1961 and 1981. Then you can target people who are living with their family. So you have the description on the right here. There's people living in households where one or more people are not immediate extended family. This is people living with their housemates, people living with their family. Are people living in households where one or more people are immediate or extended family members? So basically you can target people living with their family or living with their roommates. Then you've got life events. Under life events, you can target people whose anniversary is coming the next 30 to 60 days, anniversary in the next one month. You can target people who are away from their family, away from their hometown, people whose birthday is coming up people whose birthday is in specific months of the year, right? This is how accurate and precise and targeted you can get. You can target friends of men with a birthday in the next one week, close friends of men with a birthday in the next one month, right? Close friends of women with a birthday in the next one week or one month, friends of people who just got engaged, just got married, right? You can target people in a long distance relationship, people who've just moved on to a new job in the last six months, people who've just got into a new relationship, people who just got engaged in the last three months, six months, one year, right? Like I said, each of these targeting options has so many possibilities for businesses to use and target them, right? Even this one, there are so many businesses that could target this audience. Someone who's just got engaged. It could be a business that is into online venue booking. It could be anything to do with weddings, right? From catering to jewelry to wedding planners, whole bunch of businesses that might want to target this audience. Then you've got people who've just got married in the last three months, six months or one year. People who recently moved to a new city, right? 
all of these are life events massive there then you've got parents so you can target people who are parents of let's say newborn kids toddlers preschoolers parents of early school age children parents with preteens teenagers parents of adult children parents who are expecting all of these options are what you have here so if let's say you have an audience segment where you want to reach out to parents of teenage children you could do that if you have an audience segment where you want to reach out to parents of newborn kids you could do that parents of let's say early school age children you could do that let's say you run a play school and you want to reach out to your audience you could probably target parents with toddlers let's say you run a school and you want to target parents you could do parents with preschoolers then you've got politics which is specific to the united states so you can target people in the united states based on their political affiliations so if you have a business which has an audience in the us or if you are a business based out of the united states then this is an option that you could use then you've got relationships so you can target people in specific relationship statuses so you could target people who who are just engaged in a relationship married separated single divorced all of these then you got work so you can target people who work in specific companies you can type down the employer for example if you want to reach people in mumbai who work at let's say tcs you could do that so you could just say people in mumbai who work at tcs and you could select it from here you could also target people in specific industries so if you want to reach out to people who work in let's say computer in the computer industry or construction or education or food in the garment sector healthcare it legal right all of these production sales transportation you name the industry you'll have all of them listed here then you can also target by job titles so let's say you want to target people in mumbai who are ceos you could do that so you can select ceo and you now have a potential reach of 16000 people who are ceos 18 plus in mumbai so you have multiple options that you could use under demographics we've seen the whole list of sub categories under demographics work is particularly important especially if you're a b2b business and you want to reach out to people on facebook based on their industries employers and job titles it could help you there even for b2c businesses let's say that you have a premium product that you want to sell let's say you have a bmw showroom in mumbai you could target people with certain job titles who might be able to afford a bmw right so these targeting options under work can be used effectively both for b2b and b2c businesses so next is interests interests are massive and you have a whole bunch of interest targeting options here you have hundreds of interest targeting options to choose from you have sub categories sub sub categories you could browse through them and find any interest you're looking for the other way is to just type down the interest that you think your audience would have and you can find them right even the most niche interest is something that you would find here for example if you want to look for people who are interested in cooking in mumbai you could do that so that's a massive audience 2.4 million people in mumbai who are interested in cooking you could even try something niche let's say you want to try kickboxing so that's quite niche so you have 500000 people in mumbai who are interested in kickboxing you can even try something niche you want to try people in mumbai interested in dinosaurs you could even do that so you've got 90000 people in mumbai who are interested in dinosaurs for some reason so you could pick any niche interest 
it's very unlikely that there would be a an interest that you would not find here so you would find almost every interest that your audience would have when you search for it here and then you could target them accordingly then you've got behaviors behaviors again is a massive category you can target people by their anniversary coming up in the next two to three months you can target them by their purchase behavior so people who are predicted to prefer high value goods people who are predicted to prefer or purchase mid to high value goods so if you are into a business that sells premium products you might want to go after these guys who sell high value goods you can also target people based on the digital activities so people who are gamers based on the operating system they use right people who are facebook page admins the browser they use people who upload photos off into facebook people who update more than 50 photos on facebook in a month you can target small business owners people who adopt technology early people who are late to adopt technology so that's the digital activities you can also target expats expats are people from one country living in another so you can target expats argentina australia throughout there's a whole lot of countries that you can choose from so for example if i say expats united states so now i have 26000 american expats 18 plus who are currently in mumbai right another excellent use case of expats is to target nras so you have an option called expats india you can use this option to target indian expats in other countries for example if you want to target indian expats in australia you could select australia here and you could then select indian expats here so you'd say expats india and you can see there are about 4 lakh 30 thousand people who are indian expats 18 plus in australia right so this again opens up a whole array of possibilities and opportunities for multiple businesses that want to reach out to nras could be for example real estate where you're looking out to re looking to reach out to nras for investing in homes back home in india you could also reach out to them for different businesses let's say for investments for specific traditional designer wear whole bunch of options that you have all products that nris would want to import from india you could target them for any of those next you have mobile device user so you can target people based on the brand of mobile phones that they own so you'll find most mobile phone brands here you've got htc carbon micromax motorola so most brands are available here in fact almost all of them you could target people by their mobile os operating systems you can target people on android phones people on ios devices people on windows phones people on feature phones people who are not using smartphones yet right you could target people who use tablets whole bunch of options that you have here so you could target people in mumbai who own an iphone 7 plus for example so if you just type down here and say iphone 7 plus and change the location to mumbai since we were on australia until now for the nra targeting so now you can see there are about 40000 people 18 plus in mumbai who are using an iPhone 7 plus again very accurate targeting here which you can use across 
multiple businesses, not just for iPhone covers, cases, and accessories, but also to target a premium audience. Because in India, you can safely assume that someone who has bought an iPhone 7 Plus as soon as it is launched could be fairly affluent. So if you want to target for premium products and services, bespoke products, you might want to target this audience. Apart from digital activities and device users, you could also target people based on their multicultural affinity. This is specific to American audiences. So if you're targeting audiences in the United States, you could target them based on their cultural affinity. You can target people based on their purchase behavior as well. So these are engaged shoppers, basically people who have clicked on the call to action button shop now in the last week. So if you're, if you want to target people who do a lot of online shopping, this is something that you could use. Then you've got travel, travel, you can target frequent travelers. You can target commuters, frequent international travelers, people who've just come back from a trip a week or two ago. You also have seasonal events. So this is when there's an event happening, you would generally have people interested in the event populated here. So this is for global events that happen. You could reach out to people interested in those events. That's the behavior section. Next, you have something called more categories where you can reach out to people, let's say who are interested in nail care. So we've looked at the detailed targeting options in detail. We've looked at demographics, interests, behaviors, and more categories. And we've seen how powerful, precise, and accurate they can be. You can also target on Facebook by connections. So you can reach out to people based on who has liked your page, their friends, people who have installed your app, their friends, people who respond to your event, their friends. Right. So we've looked at the different targeting options under core targeting in detail. And like I've shown you extremely powerful that can be used to reach out to the right audiences for your business. We've looked at locations, age, gender, languages, demographics, interests, behaviors, more categories and connections. You can also mix and match different targeting types here. For example, the top four that you see, locations, age, gender, and languages, as you keep adding these, your audience will be narrower. So let's say you've got people in Mumbai who are, when I make it 25 plus, your audience will reduce from what it is now. So I'm going to, let's say, make it 25 plus. So it's now reduced to 6.4 million people. And if I want to say people who probably speak or consume content in Hindi, so it's now reduced to 3 million people. So these four here, as you keep adding options, it will narrow your audience. And then you could narrow further by adding detailed targeting. So let's say out of these, how many people are using iOS devices? So I can target people using iOS devices. So this will narrow it further. Now we've got 200,000 people. And if I want to narrow even further, I could further narrow it. If I add more here, it will expand. So if I want to add all Android devices as well, so now it will go up to 2.8 million people. And I could then narrow it further by clicking on narrow audience. And then let's say I want to target people who are also engaged shoppers. So now, yes, so we've got 610,000 people in Mumbai age 25 plus who speak or consume content in Hindi who are on Android and iOS devices and are also engaged shoppers. Right? So this is how you combine different targeting options to arrive at your target audience's interests and behavior characteristics. So now that we've looked at all the core targeting options in detail, Let's move back to the deck and take a look at an example 
of how we can use these to reach out to a specific audience segment or segments. So in case of the cupcake shop, let's say they've got three different segments they want to target. One is tourists who could walk in. Other is people who would place large seasonal orders. And the third is people who would visit the store on weekends. The first one could be aged 18 to 65, male or female. Second one could be people located in Delhi, aged 18 to 65 again, male or female. Third one as well would have similar age, location and gender targeting. Apart from this, you would also target them by their interests or segment them based on their interests and behaviors. So these people who are tourists who could possibly walk in are interested in food and drink. It could have specific hobbies and activities. Also, probably travelers are interested in travel. People who would place large orders are people who are families who love food and drink. And people who would visit the store on weekends could again be families who love to eat and have specific hobbies and activities. So you would then target each of these segments using all the targeting options that we just discussed. So since we looked at, for example, if you want to target families, you could target, for example, people who are living with their family or people who are parents of small kids. If you want to target tourists, you could target people traveling in a certain location. If you want to target people around the cupcake shop, you could do that as well. So now that we've seen how we segment our audience and how we target them using core audiences. Let's take a look at a couple of tips that would help you further. So one is when you refine who you reach, you are narrowing the focus of your audience and the size as well. So we just saw this on the live demo, how we narrowed our audience and the size kept reducing as we got more and more focused and niche. The more targeting options you add, the more specific and small your reach becomes. This is something we also just saw on the live tool. As we kept adding more layers to our targeting, the reach or the potential reach kept reducing and the audience size kept getting narrower. And your audience definition will also change not just your reach, but also your budget. So if you're targeting an audience that is more competitive, you might need to allocate a larger budget to reach out to them. Or if you're targeting an audience that is very large or very broad, you would again probably need a large budget to be able to get in front of all of them. So the way you target, the way you segment and the way you narrow or broaden your audience will define both your reach as well as how much you will have to spend to reach that audience. So like we just saw, overlapping factors like these four can reduce your audience size and you could add additional factors that could potentially increase it. This is again something that we just saw on the live tool where we added both iOS and Android devices and that increased the audience size. Now that we've looked at core audiences in detail, let's look at the next audience type, which is custom audiences. How do we reach our existing customers and prospects on Facebook? Let's first understand the concept of custom audiences. What do you mean by custom audiences? What are these and who are they? So like I said, custom audiences are reaching out to people who have already interacted with you in the past, your existing customers, your prospects. You can reach out to them on Facebook. How does it work? So you have data of your existing prospects and customers. You have their, your CRM data. You will then give this data to Facebook, which I will show you shortly how. Once you upload this data to Facebook, Facebook will then match 
specific characteristics of the audience you've uploaded. For example, Facebook will match their email IDs, Facebook will match their mobile numbers with their login email IDs and mobile numbers on Facebook. And then find the same people on Facebook for you so you can reach out to them through Facebook ads, right? So once Facebook matches it, matches your target audience, your customers, existing prospects on Facebook, you can now reach out to them through Facebook ads. So let's see what are the different sources we can use to create custom audiences. So you can create a custom audience from a customer file. This is basically your database of existing customers and prospects. You can upload this database with their email IDs and phone numbers to Facebook. Facebook will then match the email ID that you've uploaded with the login email ID of Facebook users. Find this audience for you on Facebook and you can then reach out to them through Facebook ads. The second one is website traffic. So you can create a list of people who have visited your website, who have visited certain pages on your website and then you can reach out to them. So let's say you have a whole audience that has visited your website for example in the last one week or one month. You could then build a list of these people and show targeted ads with relevant messaging to them. You could do the same thing for a mobile app. So you can build an audience of people who have installed your app or who have probably taken a specific action in your app. You could also build a list of people who have engaged with your content on Facebook. So these are the four different types of custom audiences that you can create. And I will tell you more about these in detail in a few minutes from now. Before we look at how we can practically create custom audiences on the Facebook ads manager tool, let's take a look at a custom audience case study of how a business effectively use custom audiences to drive results for them. So this is Silri, which is an India based personal items e-store. Their objective was to find new customers, target the right people and drive repeat business for them while at the same time reducing their cost of customer acquisition. So what they did was create a custom audience that we just discussed of their previous customers. So what they probably could have done was upload a customer file of all their existing customer data to Facebook and let Facebook find an audience for them. They could have also built a custom audience of everyone who visited their website or all their customers who bought from their website. They could also probably build an audience of customers who have engaged with their app. So they created a custom audience of all their previous customers and then retargeted the group of existing customers with sales offers in an effort to drive repeat business. So what they were trying to do here was give offers to existing customers to bring them back to the store, to retain them, to drive repeat purchases, while at the same time reduce their cost of acquisition. Since these are people who already know you and that's the beauty of custom audiences. These are people who already interacted with you in the past. These are people who already are well aware of your business. So the chance of them coming and buying from you or interacting with you are much higher than someone who has no clue about you, right? Since these people have already interacted with you in the past, they are extremely valuable to you. And this is exactly what Facebook ads allows you to do here is to reach out to these people effectively. And you can see the results that Silri got. Phenomenal results. They had a 25% increase in repeat orders at a 40% lower cost of customer acquisition. Simply because as I said, these are people who are already familiar with the brand. These are people who are already bought from Silri in the past. They've already gone through their entire process. They've already dealt with them before. They've already got products delivered from them before. So that trust factor is much higher than someone who doesn't know them. Right? So leveraging custom audiences is extremely important. Let's look at how we can create these audiences practically 
on the Facebook ad platform. So let's look at how we can create custom audiences. So in your audience targeting section on Facebook, you can click on create new custom audience, which says reach people who already interacted with your business in the past. Once you click on that, you can choose one of the four different types of custom audiences that you have. The first one is customer file. This is your existing database that you would have for your business of all your customers and prospects. So you can click on this. You can choose to add customers from your own data file. So you can either add a new file in CSV or TXT format with your customer email IDs or mobile numbers or both. Or you could copy paste your data here. And once you are done, you could name your audience and say next Facebook will then upload this data to Facebook. You don't have to worry about your data safety because Facebook hashes this entire data during upload. So your data, the safety of your data is not compromised. Facebook will then match the audience you've uploaded with the audience on Facebook and create your audience for you that you can reach out to through Facebook ads. Apart from customer file, the next type of custom audience that you have is website traffic, where you can create a list of people who visited your website or specific pages on your website took specific actions there. How does Facebook know somebody visited your website? This is through something called the Facebook pixel code, which you'll be looking at in a lot more detail in a later module. You'll understand completely how the pixel works, how you can set it up so that Facebook can then track your audience who visits your website or specific pages on your website. You can create a list of people who have installed your app or taken specific actions in your app. You can also create a custom audience of people who engage with your content on Facebook. So you can create an audience of people who have spent time watching your video on Facebook. Lead ads and canvas will be covered in a couple of later modules. You can also create a list of people who interacted with your page on Facebook, right? So these are the different types of custom audiences that you can create in order to reach people who have purchased from you or interacted with you in the past, either on Facebook or off Facebook. Great. So now that you've understood custom audiences, what they are, why they are so important, what are the different types of custom audiences that Facebook offers you and how do you build them on the live platform? Let's look at the next audience type that you can use to target, which is called lookalike audiences, right? This helps you expand your campaigns to audiences who are similar to your existing audiences. Let's understand what this is. So of all the audiences that you upload to Facebook or you've let Facebook track and build a custom audience for you, Facebook then analyzes these custom audiences, which are people you know, your website visitors, your app users, your page fans, people who engage with your content on Facebook. Each of these custom audiences that you upload to Facebook, Facebook then looks at this data, analyzes it. So Facebook will look at what are the common demographics, common interests, common behaviors, that these audience segments exhibit and through its artificial intelligence and machine learning algorithms, it finds other people who share similar characteristics and similar qualities. So what Facebook is doing for you here is analyzing your custom audiences of existing customers and prospects, finding what are the common demographics, interests, behavior, characteristics that they share and then finding more and more people for you who exhibit similar characteristics. 
So Facebook is through its artificial intelligence and machine learning expanding your audience for you, right? Extremely powerful targeting method because you will then be able to reach out to more and more people who are similar to your existing customers and prospects. So for example, let's say your existing customers are parents of, let's say three to eight year old kids. You will then upload your existing database to Facebook or Facebook will track it for you based on if these people have visited your website or your app or engaged with you on Facebook. It will automatically then find more such people. So basically more parents or more moms of three to eight year kids who are on Facebook, right? So Facebook is now helping your business reach out to a larger audience that exhibits similar characteristics as your existing customers and prospects. It's an extremely powerful targeting method. And let's see how we can create these audiences practically on the Facebook ad platform. So coming back to the Facebook ads manager tool in the audience targeting section, you can click on create new lookalike audience. You can then choose the custom audience that you want to use to create a lookalike. So basically you will choose the audience that you want Facebook to analyze and build a similar audience. So let's say you want Facebook to build an audience similar to all those people who visited your website in the last 30 days. So you will choose a website visitors last 30 days custom audience. All the audiences that you've created will start showing in the drop down, right? In your drop down here, all the audiences that you've created, all the custom audiences will start showing. And once you type it here, you can find them based on what you've named them. So once you selected your custom audience, you will then select your location. So you can select the country where you want to build or find people similar to your existing customers. Once you've selected your country, you can then choose your audience size. So you can choose a size which is starting from 1% to 10% of the total population of the country. If you want a really narrow and close match of your current audience, then you would choose 1%. As you increase this percentage, your audience size would increase, but it would also become less and less accurate, right? So 1% would be the closest match to your current audience and 10% would be comparatively a lesser close match. Once you do this and say create audience, Facebook will then build a lookalike audience for you, which you can then use to reach out to this new audience that you've created. Great. So now that we've looked at the different types of audiences in detail, core audiences, custom audiences, and lookalike audiences, let's look at the different placement options on Facebook. Where on Facebook can we place our ads or what does Facebook ads offer us in terms of the different networks and positions where our ads can appear? So on Facebook ads, you can choose from a wide variety of placements. You can choose to show your ad on the desktop in the newsfeed, on the right column or in the mobile newsfeed. You can choose to place your ads on Instagram. The Facebook audience network for those of you who are not aware is a network of mobile apps and websites that have partnered with Facebook to show Facebook ads on them, right? So it's basically a partner network of mobile apps and websites where your Facebook ads could possibly appear. So in your ads manager, after you've chosen your target audience, it will bring you to the placement section where you can either choose automatic placements, which is normally recommended because in this case, Facebook will automatically show your ads to the audience that is most likely to perform best 
So Facebook will choose the best performing placement for your ads in this case. If you choose edit placements, you will then be able to check or uncheck the specific platforms or networks where you want your ads to show. So you can choose Facebook, you can choose Instagram, you can choose the audience network where ads can show either as an interstitial, which is when you open an app before the app loads, you have a full screen ad, which is what you call an interstitial ad. You can have a native ad on the app or you can have a banner ad like these. So apart from choosing Facebook, Instagram or the audience network, you can also choose whether you want to show it on the news feed or on the right column. So if you want to be specific about your placements, you can do that. You can choose specific placements. So maybe you can test different placements and see which one is getting you the best results and then you can stick with that. Or you could just choose automatic placements and let Facebook automatically optimize and find the best placements that would get you the best results. Another thing that you guys should know is that the placement options that you get will vary depending on the campaign objective that you choose. For example, for the objective increased conversions on your website, you will have all these options available. But when you choose increased brand awareness, the audience network will be ineligible. So you will not be able to run audience network ad placements if you have chosen the increased brand awareness object, right? So depending on the objective you choose, you will have different placement options available to you. Great. Now that we understood the different placement options that we have and where do we find them and how do we choose them? Let's look at how do we set budgets and how do we set the schedule for our Facebook ad campaigns? The best part about Facebook ads, as you guys probably know by now, is that you have complete control of how much you spend. You can set your budget and Facebook will ensure it spends only that amount. So if you want to spend a small amount of, let's say a few hundred rupees a day, you can set your budget as a few hundred rupees a day and Facebook will ensure that it only spends that amount and does not exceed what you instructed it to spend. Okay. So you can choose either a daily or a lifetime budget when you're setting up your ad campaign. So after you're done with your audience targeting at the ad set level and the placements that we just saw, you will then be able to set your budget here. So you can choose a daily budget on how much you are willing to spend per day. Right? You can also choose a lifetime budget. Let's say you have a campaign that is supposed to run for one month from June 23rd, 2017 to July 23rd, 2017. For this entire campaign duration or for the lifetime of this campaign, which is one month, you can choose to have a lifetime budget. So what Facebook will do is it will spend this budget evenly over the lifetime of this campaign. Okay. So you can choose either daily budgets or lifetime budgets depending on your objective and your campaign. You can also decide when to stop your campaign like we just saw. If you want to start on a specific date and stop on a specific date, you can do that as well. So you can choose the entire duration of your campaign apart from just the budget. You can choose the start date and time and the stop date and time as well. You can also select the time of the day your ads should appear. One point you should remember here is that this ad scheduling option is only available when you choose lifetime budget. If you choose daily budget, this option will not be available. So only when you choose lifetime budget, will you be able to do this ad scheduling where you can choose to show your ads on sp specific times on a certain day. Let's say you want to run only from nine to six on Mondays and Wednesdays. 
you can do that. If you want to run your ads only, let's say on weekends, you can schedule it to run only on weekends. So you can choose the time of the day that you want your ads to appear as well. It's so now that you've understood budgeting, daily budgets, lifetime budgets, and schedule as well. How do you schedule your ads to start at a certain date and time, stop at a certain date and time, and also appear at specific times that you choose? Let's see how you are charged for the ads. On what basis or based on what does Facebook charge you for your ads? So you're charged for your ads in two ways. One is CPC, which is cost per click. And the other is CPM, which is cost per mil or cost per thousand impressions. So let's look at what these two are. CPM is cost per mil or cost per thousand impressions. So for those of you who are wondering why is it CPM for cost per thousand impressions? That's because M is the Roman numeral for thousand, which is why it is cost per thousand impressions. So every thousand times your ad is served or your ad is shown, you will be charged, right? So you are basically paying Facebook for every thousand times your ad is shown. That is CPM. Other is CPC which is you are paying Facebook every time a person who's viewed your ad clicks on it, right? So as it indicates cost per click, you pay every time someone clicks your ad, CPM or cost per thousand impressions, you pay every thousand times your ad is served. So how do you know what you will be charged? This depends completely on your objective. For example, let's say you've chosen a marketing objective of increased brand awareness then you will get charged on a CPM basis. Because in this case, Facebook wants to ensure that since you've chosen brand awareness and since you want to reach people to drive brand recall, it will ensure that your ad is shown to the most relevant people, right? So for every objective that you choose, on your ads manager, you will be able to see by what model or what method you are getting charged. Right. Great. So now that we've gone through the entire module, let's do a quick recap of what we've learned. So we've looked at how we can identify and segment our target audience. We've also seen why segmentation is absolutely critical to the effective performance of an ad campaign. We've seen how we can reach and target the audience segments that we just defined with absolute accuracy and precision. We've also seen how we can leverage our existing customers and prospects and reach out to them on Facebook by building custom audiences. We've also seen how we can leverage this custom audience data to expand our audience to people who are similar to our existing audiences, which is what we just call lookalike audiences. So that's a summary of what we've covered in this module. So hope you guys have had a great time learning. Thank you so much for your time and attention.